OK, this is the P3 paper from October 2022. It's question number two. And we can see this is a functions question. We're going to be able to work out the range, the inverse, domain of the inverse, which is actually the range. We're going to be able to work out the composite function. And here there's even some work involving modulus. So let's make a start. Lots to get through. What I am going to do, I'll warn you in advance with this question, is when I'm finding the range of this, which is only a two marker, I'm just going to go through some teaching points here. So I'll give you way in advance, way in excess of what you need. But at the end of the question, you can look and say, right, yeah, I only needed that bit. What I want to talk about then is these reciprocal functions. Um, if I'm finding the range of f, what I'm going to do is sketch it and just see what the range of values works out to be do be aware of the fact that actually we only needed it from x greater than or equal to naught so a lot of the work i'm going to do is a bit redundant here but might not be for other questions okay too much chat let's get going a fx is equal to 5 minus 4 over 3x plus 2 well what i want that to be is a single fraction for a reciprocal so that i can actually draw out the reciprocal so if I do the quick trick of changing that into that fraction there, then I can simplify that as being 5 times 3x plus 2 minus 4 times 1 all over 3x plus 2. I'm not spending any time on that. You should be able to do that if you're at this stage of doing an exam question. 15x plus 10 minus 4 all over 3x plus 2 or 15x plus 6 all over 3x plus 2. So that's the function that I'm going to use to work out the range to do the inverse later on. I've just rearranged it into a more manageable thing to work with. So this is the bit that's going to be extra then. If I'm drawing out this graph now, if they'd asked me to sketch it, I'm interested in four separate things. If I've got a normal set of axes, once I've got the set of axes, for these reciprocal functions, there'll be two different asymptotes. I don't know where they are at the moment, but there'll be two of those different asymptotes. Once I've done that, then that immediately means, in this particular case, my graph might look like that, or my graph might look like that. And where it hits the axes, would help me to determine the rest of the shape of the graph. So if I'm doing a reciprocal graph, I'm interested in where the asymptotes are and where it hits the axes. I'm going to do where it hits the axes first of all. So if I'm going to do that, then I'm going to say F naught, which would just be 15 lots of naught plus 6 over 3 lots of naught plus 2, that's 6 over 2, that's 3. Okay, so we know that it hits the y-axis at 3. Um, at fx equals naught, we get that 15x plus 6 all over 3x plus 2 equals naught, but we don't want that bit, do we? Because we can't have that being equal to naught. So if I get one of these, that's nice and easy. 15x plus 6 equals naught. And just rearrange that. X works out to be, what's that? Minus 6 over 15. And minus 6 over 15 is minus 2 over 5. So I know where it hits the axes. This is what I wanted to do, was to just show you how to work out the X and Y asymptotes now. Because um, some people seem to struggle, especially with the Y one. Uh, the X asymptote's nice and easy. So for the X asymptote, what I would do is I would say I've got my function 15x plus 6 over 3x plus 2. So it's the 3x plus 2, that can't equal naught. So 3x plus 2 can't equal naught. So 3x can't equal minus 2. So x can't equal minus 2 thirds. And then the other asymptote, the y asymptote, I just do it in a slightly different way. It's a really quick method. It's not quick to explain, but it's a quick once you've got the idea behind them. So again, just, just bear with me. I'll do a little bit of teaching here. 
If I'm thinking about the y asymptote here, wherever the y asymptote is, my graph is going to be coming up to it and then just getting really close to it. Whether it's from above or below, as I'm looking further and further along there, it should get closer and closer and closer to the actual value, the y value. Well, if we take that to the, the furthest understanding, what happens if I put x equals infinity? You know, as far over that way as we can go. Well, it should be the actual value for the y asymptote. How does that work in terms of the algebra? Really easy. So this is why we do it. So what we're going to say is for the y asymptote, what I want to have is f infinity. If x is equal to infinity, it will tend towards the y asymptote, which will be 15 infinity plus 6 over 3 lots of infinity plus 2. And then it's just this bit of logical thinking. If I've got 15 lots of infinity, which is some huge, massive number, adding 6 on doesn't make any difference to it at all. If it's 15 billion, trillion, zillion, and I add 6 on, it's still 15 billion, zillion, trillion. It's the same. Same if I do 3 infinity. The plus 2 doesn't make any difference there. So I end up getting 15 infinity over 3 lots of infinity. And then we can cancel them. We can just cancel out. So I get 15 over 3, which means I get 5. That's the y asymptote. Now, when you get used to that little technique, we could have done that straight away pretty much just by looking at that function and saying, well, if I'm sticking infinity in, I'm going to get, oh, I'm going to get 15 infinity over 3. I'm going to get 15 over 3. I'm going to get 5. So although it's taken me quite a long time to explain that to you, it's a really nice, quick way of doing that. So we've now got all that information too much really but in order to sketch if the question sorry if the question had been to sketch out the function then all of that information would have been useful remember this is only two marks for this so i've got i've gone a bit of overkill when i've actually been doing that but if i now put in the information that we had we had that this asymptote was at x equals minus two thirds we had there was a y asymptote Actually, I'm not going to put it that high just because I want to be able to see a bit of my graph here. The y asymptote at 5. Remember, there's no values here, so it's up to me to say that that's 5 there and that's going to be uh, x equals minus 2 thirds here. And then because we know that it hits the axes at 3 and minus 2 fifths, that's here and here. So I now know the only thing that my graph can do is that up there and that up there, okay, where this value is 3. And if I wanted this value, which I might do later on in the question, this value here is uh, x equals minus 2 fifths. Now, as I say, way too much information for the two marks that we're going to get for finding our range. But now that I've got all that stuff, I can now find the range quite easily. So the range of the function... Remembering that, uh, they said x is greater than or equal to null. Actually, my function then is just this. This is the only bit of this graph that's actually my function. That bit there, not interested in all of that. And we could have said that at the start, but as I say, I wanted to show you just a little bit of teaching here. So the range of this is just from there to there. Now, let's just be careful we can actually include the value of 3 in there, but we can't include the value of 5. When I'm doing the actual answer now for my range, for fx, it actually touches the 3, but 5 is an asymptote, so it won't get to the 5 there. Right, so there's a lot of information there, perhaps some of it that we don't need, but hopefully in terms of other questions that you do, that's been a little bit helpful to us. Let's go on and finish off the rest of this question, but at a proper speed now. So B, B part one says, can I find the inverse of the function? Yeah, absolutely. If I've got for B part one, we had that our function was fx equals 15x plus six all over three x plus two. And if I want to work out my inverse, I'm just going to set y equal to that. 
Let's see if I can write that out a bit neater this time. Over 3x plus 2. And all I need to do now is to rearrange and make x the subject of the formula. So you should have practiced this a lot. This should be really, really quick to us. I'm going to take that over to the other side, multiply it all out, collect the x's together on one side, and then factorize. I've said a lot. Let's actually do it. So y, 3x plus 2 equals 15x plus 6. So that's 3yx plus 2y is equal to 15x plus 6. My handwriting seems to have gone to pieces here for some reason. Uh, get the y's onto one side and the x's onto the other. 2y minus 6. 15x minus 3yx. Take x out as a factor here. So 2y minus 6 equals... I'm taking this out as a factor because the next step is going to be to divide by that 15 minus 3y. So 2y minus 6 over 15 minus 3y is equal to x. And they wanted inverse. So actually, even though I've rewritten that in terms of y's, the actual inverse function is putting x's back in. 2x minus 6 over 15 minus 3x. That should be an absolutely straightforward thing for you to do. It shouldn't be causing you any issues whatsoever. Uh, let's make sure I've underlined that for the answer to that part. B part 2, write down the domain of f to minus 1. Well, the domain of the inverse is just the range of the original function. So here, that was between 3 and 5. So part 2, the domain of f to the minus 1x. They're x values, so call them x values, but it's x is whatever it was for the previous answer, the same. So between 5 and 3, including 3 but not including the 5 there. Nice, easy second part of that question. And then the last part is going to be a composite function, and we're also going to be using the idea of the fact that this modulus bit here. So it says part C, really very different to the rest of it, but let's just go through it. Part C says, can we find f, g of minus pi? Well, what I need to start off by doing is finding g of minus pi. Once I've got that, I can do f of that. That'll be f, g minus pi. So what's g minus pi is equal to... And the function was the modulus of 4 sine minus pi over 3 plus pi over 6 and do the modulus of it. Well, that's the same as 4 sine minus pi over 6. Get the answer to that. Sine pi over 6. Multiply it. Anyway, it's going to work out to be equal to 2. Not particularly complicated. So f g minus pi then is f 2. f g minus pi is f 2 because that's what we got for g minus uh, pi. F, uh, g, g of minus pi, yeah. So f 2 then is 5 minus, just put 2 in, 4 over 6 plus 2. Tidy that up, do it on the calculator. It's been a long video. I'm just going to give us the answer to that part. The answer works out to be equal to 9 over 2. So forgiving that went on quite long, but as I say, there's quite a few teaching points in there, but hopefully all of those bits and pieces made sense. You would very much shorten that for the seven marks that's available for that question.